culture has forced many Christians are to primarily evaluate everything through the lens of individualism. And Jesus' teachings were centered around other people. He said the great commandments were loving God and loving one another. And it's very, very hard to love other people like Jesus commanded us when we're obsessed with ourselves. And so when people bring those expectations into the church, it, we don't have the resources uh, to be able to live our faith like Jesus has called us to. One of the great challenges that we have in being disciples of Jesus is that our culture pushes uh, individual projects, which I would call project self, which means we think the whole world exists to build our lives, uh, maximum pleasure and maximum expression for the individual. Uh, and so when it comes to following Jesus, we end up just dabbling with the teachings of Jesus and importing what he offers to simply make our lives better. And the problem with that is that we never actually get to the heart of what Jesus talked about. He framed up discipleship as self-denial, taking up our cross, loving one another, being servants, washing feet, giving ourselves away. And so we live with that tension between wanting to use Jesus for project self rather than following Jesus on behalf of others. More than half of millennials have not attended church in the last six months. Six out of 10 Christians in their 20s have dropped out of church at some point. The majority of people choose their church because they enjoy the preaching. Only one in 10 say they attend church because they feel a need to be a part of a community. Uh, there's just been so many studies that have come out that have shown that the way to true authentic happiness is not by trying to find happiness or have our own needs met, but it's by giving ourselves away on behalf of others. And so we never get to the good life Jesus promises when we're only dabbling with consumer preferences. We crave to be loved, we crave to be known, we crave to be accepted. And if we don't find that in, inside a community of grace, where else are we gonna find that in the world? People normally respond to the call of Jesus at three levels. First, there's the public level, which is what do I do with my job? What do I do in the world? Then they have a private level. What do I do with my friends? And then a personal level. What do I do with the issues of my own heart? And Jesus actually, although those are appropriate lenses, Jesus calls us to something deeper. There is a primal call of Jesus, which is about shared discipleship and community and mission which is below our individual concerns about our faith. And so Jesus calls us beyond just an entertaining or individual faith into a communal expression uh, of his kingdom here on the earth. There's another way to tap into the deeper call of Jesus. And it's shifting from dabbling in the Christian faith to devoting ourselves to following Jesus. It's a shift from convenience to proximity where we choose where we live based on organizing our lives in ways that enable us to love people well. It's a shift from believing in Jesus to actually practicing what it is that he taught so we can embody the ethics of Jesus and the practices of Jesus and people can see an idea of what it actually looks like to follow him. And the last one is a shift from transience to permanence, where instead of just drifting across the continent following economic forces like everybody else, we choose to stay in a place so that we can love it and serve it over the long haul. I think people expect the church to be different from the world. And when they step into the church and it looks like the world, I think in many ways they're really disappointed. Uh, they want the church to be a counterculture. And so people don't just need ideas to change their lives, they need power to do it. And God doesn't bless worldliness. And so when we actually line up with what it is that Jesus taught, he blesses it, he anoints it, he gives it his power. And so Christians have a capacity to live the way God wants them to do in a really heavily contested culture like ours. Charles Taylor said that in the 1950s, we live in a culture of belief and people were tempted to doubt. But in a secular culture, it's a culture of doubt and people are tempted to believe. And so when people see the church as a compelling counterculture, they're tempted to move out of secularism and embrace something that's true and beautiful and hopeful and resonates with the things that they're wrestling with. We can't give up on the church because Jesus won't give up on the church. We are the church and Jesus won't give up on us. I think about the story about the couple on the road to Emmaus who were disappointed in how Jesus' life had ended up and were leaving the city of Jerusalem. And Jesus appears to them, shows them the truth of the scripture, breaks bread with them and then reveals himself to them. And they have this little phrase that says, did not our hearts burn within us? And with hearts that were back on fire, they went back to the people of God and rejoined in what God was doing in the world. 
I think that's God's heart for people who have dropped out of the church, is that they need to have a fresh encounter with who Jesus is, what he wants from them, that he does want to use them, that they're not destined to be cynics, not destined to be people without hope, that God can draw them into something beautiful and compelling, and they don't just need to consume from it, but they have unique stories that they can contribute, unique experiences that will meet the needs and brokenness in other people's lives. And that when they give themselves away and use their wounds and their cynicism and disillusionment, God can use them as forces of healing for those who've wrestled with similar things.